A bug travels from A to B along the segments in the hexagonal lattice. The segments marked with an arrow can be traveled only in the direction of the arrow, and the bug never travels the same segment more than once. How many different paths are there? Well, how do we debug this problem? If we try to attack this complex combinatorial problem directly as it is, with bare hands, so to speak, we can face significant challenges and can be easily lost in the endless labyrinth of choices. Let's employ some mathematical tools. The power of math lies largely in its rich arsenal of tools, such as well-defined structures, formulas, and methods. The skill of a mathematician, especially while solving complex math problems, is in his or her ability to choose the proper tools that might help to solve each concrete problem. Let's use the Cartesian coordinates x and y for all possible points along the path of the bug. Then points a and b belong to x-axis. And all segments marked with left arrows belong to x-axis. Notice that the segments without arrows can be drawn as straight lines along which the bug can move up and down between the segments with arrows with the only restriction that it cannot travel along the same segment twice. Anything that can make the bulky problem more manageable is worth to try. Now let's apply the old principle of ancient Romans. Divide the enemy into small parts, that is cases, and conquer. Notice that this map can be divided into three independent sections. The first section is between point A and vertical line whose x-coordinate is equal 3. The second section is between line 3 and line 5. And the third section is between line 5 and point B. We can make the observation that from every entry point in each of these three sections, the bug cannot go back to the previous section. Then, due to symmetry of all valid paths over x-axis, and by looking at the configuration of the map, we can conclude that the number of different paths the bug has to go through each section does not depend on the selection of the entry point into this section. From each entry point, the number of paths available to the bug to go through this section is the same. If this conclusion is correct, then we can separately count the number of paths per entry point in each section and multiply these three numbers to answer the question of the problem. To count the number of paths in each section, we will further divide them into two cases. Case 1 includes all the paths that do not go through the segments with left arrows. In this case, the bug is free to choose any next right arrow on every step of the way without any restrictions. So to count the number of different paths for case number 1 in each section, we must count the number of right arrows the bug can choose from for each integer point on x-axis and multiply these numbers. We can simply count these numbers while looking at the map. For the first section they are 2, 2 and 4. For the second section they are 4 and 4. And for the third section they are 2 and 2. These numbers are shown on this diagram. The second case obviously includes all the paths that go through the segments with left arrows. Let's count the paths in case 2. The first choice in section number 1 is between two segments with right arrows whose y-coordinate is either plus 1 or minus 1. Due to symmetry, we can examine only the paths that start with the segment that has y-coordinate plus 1. This diagram 
shows an invalid path. This path goes down and crosses x-axis, which creates a loop, which is not allowed. This diagram shows a valid path, along which the only choice the bug has is between two segments with right arrows with y coordinate minus 1 or minus 3. Notice that the other two right arrows with y coordinate plus 1 and plus 3 are not accessible because that would create an illegal loop. Thus, the number of different paths in case 2 in section number 1 is 2 times 2 equals 4. Let's remember this result. Now let's see what happens with case 2 in section number 2. This diagram shows the paths for case 2 in section number 2, which have two entry points that are both above x-axis. Obviously, all the paths that have the other two entry points that are below x-axis are symmetrical to these paths, over x-axis, and their number is the same. We can see that the bug is allowed to make three independent choices in this case. First, between two right arrows with y-coordinates 2 and 4. Then, after going through the left arrow, it can make a choice between two right arrows with y-coordinate minus 2 and minus 4. Then between two segments with right arrows with coordinate minus 1 and minus 3. Notice that the other two segments with right arrows with coordinates plus 1 and plus 3 are not accessible because it would create an illegal loop. Thus the number of different paths in section number 2 per each entry point in case 2 is equal 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8. Let's remember this result as well. The last case is case 2 in section number 3. This is the easiest case since the bug doesn't have any choice at all in this case. Once the bug reaches any of the four entry points on vertical line 5, there is only one path from that point to point B in case 2. So the number of paths per each entry point in this case is equal to 1. Let's summarize our results for case 2 in all three sections. Now let us count the total numbers of all different paths per each entry point in all three sections from both cases. After multiplying the total numbers of paths in all three sections, we get the total number of different paths from point A to point B. It's equal to 2400. The answer is E.